Texas running back Jonathan Brooks is already a top 10 dynasty running back. We will explain why on this episode of the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. You are Locked On Dynasty Football, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Here are your hosts, Marcus Mosher and Kate Madjuke. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code LOCKEDONNFL for $20 off your first purchase. I am your host, Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. Joining me today, as always, is Kate Majuk. You can follow her on Twitter, at Kate Majuk. And on today's show, we are previewing Texas running back Jonathan Brooks, who is widely considered the top running back in the 2024 draft. Kate, I believe he's already a top 10 dynasty running back with the potential to go even higher than that. But first, what did you see when you watched him on tape? There's a lot to love about Jonathan Brooks, and I really wish we had more time watching him. But Marcus, it's really hard to find your way onto the field when you're playing behind guys like, oh, I don't know, B. John Robinson. You know, we talk about, you know, sometimes. Hey, you know, Rochelle Johnson. I mean, like we we want we want to see the guys make their way to the field, right? But in that circumstance, it was all but impossible. So he finally gets his chance in his final season at Texas. And man, he absolutely showed up in the workhorse role. Uh, 187 attempts, uh, just over 1,100 rushing yards, 10 touchdowns. What's most impressive for me is the work as a receiver, 25 mm -hmm. receptions, 286 receiving yards and a score there. Generally speaking, what you're going to see with Jonathan Brooks is a very well-rounded running back who's got pretty much every skill set. He misses force tackles. He can make yards after contact per attempt, despite the fact that he's not necessarily the most well, you know, not the toughest runner, I would say. Um, you're going to get just a very well-rounded running back who can, you know, excel in pass protection. He can excel as a receiver. And, Marcus, what you're going to love watching Jonathan Brooks is the vision, the elusiveness, mm -hmm. the balance, because I, I mean, his footwork is incredible. He's six foot, 216 pounds. So good build for a running back. And that, that balance of and elusiveness, I think is what's going to make him a star in the national football league sooner rather than later. Yeah, I, I agree. Like that to me is his biggest strength is his ability to make these cuts at full speed, break through arm tackles. He has just a really good sense of uh, how to anticipate his next move, how, where defenders are going to be. I don't know if he has one trait that's like an A plus. And if you look at like Bijan Robinson or Brees Hall, these guys all have like A plus athleticism. I don't know if he has that. I think he's a very good athlete. I don't know that he's a special athlete. But everything he does is like a B or a B plus in pass protection. I think he's a really good pass blocker, which is going to get him on the field early in his NFL career. I think he's a good receiver. Um, I think he's got good contact balance. So when you start just having all these B pluses, it kind of makes you like an A prospect. There's just nothing to poke a hole through uh, in his game. The only big knock on him is the injury. He tore his ACL uh, late in November. The expectation is, is that he'll he'll be ready uh, for training camp. If not for training camp, he'll be ready by week one. Maybe you'll have to limit his workload a little bit. Now, the good news is, is we've seen Kate running backs over the last couple of years, like tear their ACL and just come back the next year playing even better. I think Brees Hall is a really good example of that. The younger running backs seem like they can bounce back quicker. And the other thing I want to mention is there's just not a lot of wear and tear on his body. And I know that sounds weird when we're talking about a running back who is literally coming off a major knee injury, but 238 career carries, 28 receptions. I mean, you're looking at 260 touches in three years at Texas. I mean, we, we talked about some of these other running backs, uh, you know, early on in the soft season, like somebody like Ray Davis, who we like a lot has over 800 college touches. 
Jonathan Brooks doesn't have that. So I would expect that in the NFL, he's only 20 years old right now. I would expect that you're going to get five, six really solid years for him right away. Yeah, I think, you know, the the fresh, quote unquote, f- fresh legs, it definitely gives him an edge. And you mentioned the injury, of course, which is a big part. But, you know, he is 20 years old and we've seen these young running backs bounce back from these ACL injuries. I, I think the younger you are, that's a bit of an advantage to you, generally speaking. Um, you know, that was his first sort of major knee injury, which is a, a good thing. We have, you know, some some running backs in this class who have also suffered torn ACLs. The the thing I think you have to expect with Jonathan Brooks is that maybe they do ease him into the offense here early on coming off that torn ACL. He might not be um, the workhorse, I think, coming out of the gate that I think he's more than capable of. Like, I think Jonathan Brooks has the most well-rounded skill set when it comes to the running backs in this class. I think he's one of the few running backs that I can see in a true three down every snap of the game. You want him on the field. Like he's one of those guys that very few prospects in this class. I can see having that true three down skill set where you have that, uh, you know, just absolute workhorse utilization. You're probably not going to expect that coming out of the gate, coming off that torn ACL. So Honestly, when I'm kind of envisioning the way that things are going to work out for Jonathan Brooks, I think, you know, obviously there's a good chance that he's the top running back in the class, although, you know, maybe a Trey Benson or somebody sneaks in there if teams are really antsy to get a guy that they can put on the field day one and go full steam ahead. But if you have the patience uh, that, that, you know, it's going to take maybe for a Jonathan Brooks, you're going to be very handsomely rewarded because I just don't think there are no holes in his game that I can really find. And maybe the biggest critique is that like, he's not necessarily like a, a tough runner, but I think he's so elusive. And I think the footwork is so good that it doesn't necessarily, like he doesn't take unnecessary contact, which I think is what I, I really like about Brooks. Cause again, injury aside, that's that's generally a good thing. I want my guys to be elusive enough that they don't have to take these monstrous hits from opposing defenders. I I'd, I'd, I'd rather you use some fancy footwork and and dodge that entirely. I think in an ideal situation, he lands with somebody who um, he goes to a team where he doesn't have to start right away. And he can get, you know, eight to 10 touches. And then halfway through the season, he's getting 25, 26 touches. Oh, that's a little high. 20 to 22 touches a game, right? However, one of the reasons why I'm so high on him in Dynasty is because I think he's going to do the opposite of that, Kate. I think he's going to get drafted and immediately be a team starter and immediately get a bunch of touches early on. Uh, I think there's a couple landing spots in the mid to late portions of the second round where he's just going to be the clear cut starter and it's going to be, you know, pedaled to the floor uh, right away. I want to talk about, I don't, I don't think it, I like it. I don't think we should expect a slow start from him because, or a decreased workload from him because he's not ready. Cause I think he's the most pro ready running back in this class. Yes. My concern comes more from the, the ACL. Like if he's not, a guy yeah. that gets to get as many reps in training camp as you would like coming out of the gate, coming off that injury, he might require a ramp up period. And again, not because disagree. he's yeah. not the clear cut starter, but because physically for the longevity of his health, for, for the sake of his season long term, it might necessitate that based on the way we've seen teams utilize running backs in the past, but we'll see. All right, I want to talk, discuss some of the analytics with Jonathan Brooks because the more that you dig in here, there's the more that you like. And I want to discuss some landing spots because that's going to really decide his dynasty va- dynasty value. We will get to that next. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. What's the first thing that you would do if you had an extra hour in your day? Would you go for a run? Would you take a nap? That sounds great right now. Would you read a book? Uh, What about show up for a friend? A lot of us spend our lives wishing that we had more time. The question is, time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? 
the best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you and make it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so that you can go and do more of it. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's done entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for any reason at no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Just visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That is BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. We want to let you know about the Locked On NFL Mock Draft live show on April 17th at 7 p.m. Eastern, streaming on the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Find the ultimate six-episode series on April 17th at 7 p.m. Eastern to hear who the local Locked On experts are picking for every NFL franchise with live reaction from local college football experts and even the fantasy football angle, the Locked On NFL Mock Draft on April 17th at 7 p.m. Eastern, streaming live on Locked On Sports Today, 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. All right, Kate, let's dive into the analytics. What do we got? Got a lot to like, Marcus. And keep in mind that you can really only look at his advanced metrics for the 2023 season because he was playing in such a limited role prior. But in 2023, ranked 95th or 91st percentile in terms of rushing grade, two sticky stats that I love for running backs, missed horse tackles per attempt ranked in the 95th percentile, yards after contact per attempt, 82nd. And Marcus, we talked about the receiving chops, 94th percentile in PFF receiving grade, 76th percentile in yards per route run. Jonathan Brooks, like the tape and the analytics advanced data, they match up perfectly because you look at Jonathan Brooks and as well-rounded a skill set as you see him have on the field, that is very well reflected in the analytics. So... I've got one number that I wanted to, to to tell you about. So we've got this really cool stat from PFF is for percentage of rushes into heavy boxes. So a heavy box is usually seven or more defenders before the snap. And if we take out the garbage time plays, you know, at the end of the games when everybody knows you're running, Brooks saw about 65% of his carries against heavy boxes, which is well above average. And yet, Kate, he still averaged over six yards per carry when running against heavy boxes. So this isn't just big freeway lanes that he's running through like Jalen Wright did at Tennessee, who we'll talk about maybe in a later episode. He's used to running like an NFL style of offense. He's used to having to make guys miss and make quick decisions. That, on top of all the advanced stuff that you just gave us, including the missed tackles forced, makes me feel really confident when he's fully healthy in the NFL He's going to have no problem being successful right away. Yeah, I think all of these stats translate to a guy that his game is going to translate to the NFL, I think, very well, especially when you consider the chops as a pass blocker, which we know like you could be the best run in the world, but if you are a liability in pass protection, it's going to be very hard for you to get snaps on those key third down situations where, you know, you're you're probably going to be passing. And for him to come in, I think day one, he's going to be able to step into that role, which is going to give him that ability to stay on the field when healthy for the majority mm-hmm. of the game and be that workhorse guy. Um, you know, I, I really like that stacked boxes stat, mm-hmm. especially because, again, he's not like the biggest bulldozer of a runner. We look at his profile. He's 216 pounds, six foot tall. That's that's really good for a running back, but that's not monstrous for a running back. He's not coming out like 230 pounds. Like no, but I think he's a great he size. He doesn't need to be though, because even going up against stack boxes, you see the vision that he has, and I think that that allows him to get a lot of extra yardage. He's, I think, patient enough to allow for blocks to develop. Um, you know that little bit of hesitancy instead of going full steam ahead. That that can allow the play to develop. And I think he's got a really good innate feel for that as a running back. 
Um, and despite the fact that he's not necessarily the biggest, thickest running back, um, the fact that his game translates against a stacked box tells me wonders about just how good the footwork is, just how good the patience and vision yeah. is. And I think that like the mentals especially are all there. And, you know, obviously we didn't get to see him test at the combine due to that torn ACL, but I think we probably would have been pleasantly surprised for Jonathan Brooks. He, you know, he's not going to test like a Jalen Wright who uh, knocked everybody's socks off, but I think he's a really solid athlete. Like there, there's just not really anything that I can find that I don't like about Jonathan Brooks, other than the fact that he's coming off a torn ACL and yeah, for that, Dynasty, that, and that's the thing, right? It doesn't I, matter. I, I, I think if he didn't have the torn ACL, we're talking about somebody who has a very good chance to slide into the back of the first round. Um, now I'm not saying that he would probably more likely goes like in the, you know, mid to late thirties. Um, uh, but he's that type of player, uh, really quickly, just a fun stat on Jonathan Brooks. Uh, and this comes from Dane Brugler's draft guide as a senior Brooks had a record breaking season with 3,500 rushing yards on 295 carries 12.0 average in 70 touchdowns. I mean, that's insane in Texas what? to put up those numbers. <laughs> uh, during that season, he counted for 4,000 all-purpose yards and intercepted a pair of passes. Uh, in the in the championship game, uh, he had uh, – sorry, I, I, I missed that. Uh, helped him win the state championship. I uh, finished his career with 6,637 rushing uh, yards. Pretty incredible. I mean, this is like somebody who was born to be an NFL running back. The injury is uh, – uh, it's very unfortunate because he could have been a much higher draft pick. But let's talk about some landing spots, Kate, because this is going to decide his his value. I think you and I both agree he's going to go somewhere in the second round, probably starting in the 40s to the 50s range. What team would you like to see him land on? Ooh, this is a tough one. Uh, and I, I guess it's not really a tough one, but it is a tough one because I think there are so many teams that could utilize his skill set. And I do think that there are a lot of teams where he comes in and he's automatically, you know, day one starter. But Marcus, we got to talk about your Dallas Cowboys here, who uh what the the team doctor for the Dallas Cowboys performed Jonathan Brooks's yep. ACL surgery. So there is a a little bit of connection there. And you have to imagine if you're the Cowboys, you're going to feel a little bit better about the medicals, knowing that your guy is the one that did that surgery, right? You're going to feel pretty good mm -hmm. about that. And uh, you're going to have a little bit more information about that injury at your disposal here. Dallas Cowboys, he comes in day one, not even a question. Like there is no running back on that roster that is going to compete with Brooks for in every down role. Uh, there have been some rumors that the Cowboys would like to bring back Ezekiel Elliott. I don't think at this point, even with the ties he has to the Cowboys, that, you know, even relationship wise, like you're not going to give him touches just for the sake of giving him touches. I think if they walk away with Jonathan Brooks, it's Jonathan Brooks. So let me ask you this, Kate. If, if the Cowboys draft Jonathan Brooks at 56, which feels... I don't want to say likely, but it's a very common uh, pick in drafts right now. How highly would you rank him among dynasty running backs right now? Marcus, It, I, I think you have to rank him very, very, very can, highly. Can I give you some names just to make it easier? You you tell me. Again, we're, we're yeah. going under the presumption uh, that Brooks goes to Dallas at 56. Would you rather have Brooks or Saquon Barkley? Brooks. Okay. Brooks or Travis Etienne? Brooks. Brooks is five years younger, just to be clear. Yeah. Uh, Brooks or Devon A. Chain. Brooks, easy. Brooks or Kyron Williams. Uh, this one's a lot harder for me. Um, if he has the second round draft capital, I'd probably give him that edge, but okay. that yeah, that's probably take it. okay. Yeah. Jonathan Taylor. I'll take Brooks. Uh Christian McCaffrey. Probably Brooks. I mean, it, Jameer, again, Jameer this Gibbs. is coming in. This I, I draw the line at Christian McCaffrey, which again, okay. it feels really stupid to to talk about Jonathan Brooks well, over Christian McCaffrey. But 
But assume it, even let's put them in the same tier. You're already talking about Brooks as a top five dynasty running back, not just top 10, yeah. top five. So that's where I believe right now he is a huge value. We're going to talk about where he's being drafted and ranked among all the other running backs right now. Uh, but I think he's a huge, huge steal uh, right now in his dynasty of value. Let's dive into that more, Kate, and let's talk about some other potential landing spots next. This episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. I love using game time to go to Penguins games and go to Pirates games. You can save up to 60% off buying last minutes for sports. Again, hockey, baseball, football, basketball, concerts, comedy, and theater events near you. You can save even more with exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or the event. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use promo code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem promo code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off. Download the game time app today. Lowest or uh, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. We are discussing Texas running back Jonathan Brooks. Okay, where is his dynasty value currently? Too dang low, Marcus. That's where his dynasty value is it. right now among all running backs. And we'll get to his position among rookies, which we teased uh, earlier here in the show. But right now in dynasty startup ADP over on dynasty league football, Jonathan Brooks is being valued as the overall RB 18 in Wild. dynasty startups disrespectful out of the gate. And this is not just like, you know, I, I think hesitancy because of rookies. Cause you look at the ADP for wide receivers. We currently have two rookies, both ranked inside the top 10. Uh, we have Marvin Harrison jr. At wide receiver five and Malik mm -hmm. neighbors wide receiver nine. So this isn't necessarily a group of drafters that are being overly shy when it comes to the rookie position. So I think what you have to do with Jonathan Brooks, and I think what's the most wise in terms of evaluating his standing from um, a, a dynasty perspective, A, he's 20 years old. I think you draft him as if he never tore his ACL. There have been no reports of complications regarding um, his torn ACL. Um, by all means, like it, it seems like he's right on track. Throw the torn ACL out the window because I think that that has to be the only reason that he is being valued behind guys like, uh, you know, a DeAndre Swift, a, a Javante Williams, like Kenneth Walker. Who, by the way, Javante Williams had a major, major knee injury. Was it two years ago? Right. Yes. Yes. Like, what are we doing here? And it, I mean, is that it? Is it, like. I don't know because we're drafting Marvin Harrison and, and obviously like there's a difference between maybe a blue chip wide receiver prospect that like wherever he goes, it, he'll be successful. But I think, you know, Jonathan Brooks is as close to safe as you can get at the running back position in this class. Like I think wherever he lands, he is going to be a, an every down guy. And I mean, we already talked about it last segment. Like he's much closer to the overall RB five than he is the overall RB twenty. Yeah. Uh, so let's play a little game. I'm gonna name a, a team. You tell me whether this would be a positive, a negative, or a neutral landing spot. Um, all right, let's start at the first team that I could realistically see drafting him would be the Chargers at thirty seven. A plus. Okay. Um, the Las Vegas Raiders at 44. Um, I'm going to call that a, a net neutral. Okay. See, I think that's a positive. I think that's a team that wants to run the ball. I think that's a really good landing spot. Uh, the Bengals at 49. Um, I'm going to say that's a negative. I, um, I would agree. I could just picture, I could picture that situation getting a little convoluted um, and, with Chase yeah. Brown and Zach Moss and with that pass, like 
that one would worry me a little bit. Um, here's a really interesting one. What about the Browns at 54? Ooh, um, I actually would really like that landing spot a lot. And I think that the Browns are probably the most underrated landing spot for potential rookie running backs that nobody is talking about. They just restructured their deal with Nick Chubb, which I do think, you know, he can still earn back a lot of that in incentives, but on the older side, coming off that torn ACL, they have to be preparing for a world where they need help at running back. I saw they brought Trey Benson in for a a top 30 visit. I have to imagine that there's some curiosity there um, around Jonathan Brooks. And I mean, we've seen a, a total willingness from this offense to go full steam ahead with a workhorse running back. It seems like a great fit. Yeah, we already mentioned the Cowboys are a good fit. Three more that I wanted to do quickly. Tampa Bay, which they seem like they're in the market for a running back. Um, I would be less excited about this. I think, you know, just from an offensive line standpoint, some some red flags there. And I do think that the presence of Rashad White, though I've been kind of down on him in terms of, like, I, I think he's been more of a volume play than an efficiency play. I still think the the sheer threat of him for a receiving role would generally lower the ceiling that we're going to see from Jonathan Brooks, as opposed to a different offense. Uh, Two more. Um, The Buffalo bills have done a lot of work on Jonathan Brooks. Would you be interested in that (laughs) landing spot? Um, no. (laughs) Yeah. That one, that same, that, that one would concern me as would the Kansas city chiefs at 64 who have also looked at running backs. Yeah, um, Jonathan Brooks did. I, I think a report just came out a couple of days ago, or what, maybe it was yesterday, um, that Jonathan Brooks was visiting Kansas City for a top thirty visit. Um, I let's just say I'd prefer Brooks with the Kansas City Chiefs than the the Bills. I think you know, yeah, James James Cook, a, a excellent skill set. I don't think that Brooks's game and Cooks's game are dissimilar I, enough no I, like, I i think they're almost that's actually not a terrible comp for jonathan brooks it I, really I isn't if, like i think if the chiefs are going after brooks i think that tells me a little bit about isaiah pacheco's health mm-hmm. he's had multiple surgeries on his shoulder maybe they're worried about how long he's gonna last um i still i i mean i know i'm a little biased because i'm a cowboy uh whatever <laughs> fan uh podcaster i think from the best dynasty in fantasy football spot it's the dallas cowboys that's a team that scores a bunch of points every single year and their running backs are always very fantasy uh relevant i think that's the hope if you have an early pick and you want to draft a running back i think brooks to the cowboys makes the most sense really quickly kate before we go i did want to mention a comp uh you and i were talking pre-show my comp is aaron jones who's a little bit shorter than brooks but i think the running styles are similar Brooks or uh, Jones is just a very good overall running back who has been highly successful and highly efficient for several years now. I think Brooks could have a similar NFL career. Yeah. And you look at Aaron Jones and maybe what was so surprising is the the lack of draft capital there. If Jonathan Brooks can emerge um, with some of that early draft capital. And again, we just mentioned uh, his name, which this was not a name that like came up here in, um, our pre conversation here, but I actually don't think like a larger James, like he's like a big James cook. I think that could be like an him. interesting comp from like a play style and where they win, not necessarily like a physical build, but I think, you know, both have speed elusiveness and that's sort of the pinnacle of their game as opposed to driving through contact. Like, I, I don't like think it. it's the worst comp either. No, I like it. I think that's a very good one. Um, I'm glad we stumbled upon it. So somewhere between James Cook and Aaron Jones, very, very good NFL player, very good prospect. Can't wait to see where he lands. That is it for today's show. We want to thank you for making Lockdown Dynasty your first listen every single day. On tomorrow's show, it's a Wednesday show. So, of course, that means Matt Williamson will be here uh, to talk some NFL draft. Uh, so can't wait for that. Go download the podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Go follow Kate on Twitter at Kate Majuk. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosier, and we will see you right back here tomorrow.